eliminated uh, Kenneth Erickson, also eliminated, eliminated Timo Sana. Well, for the semi-finals, the drivers move into the fabulous S1 Audi Quattro's old Group B rally cars, which have now been outlawed. They were just too powerful, the governing body of motorsport said. It's great to see them in action again. In fact, this is the only event now where we actually still see these cars driven in anger. Just look at them. Big beast, 500 brake horsepower. And of course, Dick Blomqvist, very used to this kind of car. Carlos Sainz probably has never driven an Audi Quattro before. In fact, I'm pretty certain that's the case. Really, the advantage should be with Stig Blomqvist. He did all the development in these cars. In a very similar car, he won the Hong Kong to Beijing rally about three years ago. The last rally he won in an Audi Quattro. And loves this five from the guy. Describes it as the best rally car that's ever been built. I'm sure Carlos Sainz is enjoying the power and the enormous traction of the S1. It's a little long in the tooth now, these two white private cars, in fact. It's a car rather similar to this that uh, Michel Mouton, the designer of this event, won her five uh, World Championship rallies in. Back the one car, I noticed Swedish registered. And just look at this. And uh, Stig Blomqvist getting it right. And Stig Blomqvist, and just look at the time, 127.10. That's the fastest time. And uh, a nice replay there of a full-blooded four-wheel drift. But this is the best of three. And again, we see that from a different angle. And just look how the car slides, kicks up the dust. And the chequered flag. Blomqvist wins 127.10 by 0.8 of a second. They go again. Head to head. Signs on the outside this time. Longest on the inside. Look at those knobbly rally tyres. Mr. By Bendham on the front. And that's the make of tyre. And off they go. Four wheel grip forcing the cars forward. 500 brake horsepower. Five cylinder fuel injected engine propelling it through the air there. Well, Carlos Sainz is the reigning world rally champion. Dick Blomqvist the champion in 1984. Something in the region of 10 world championship rally successes to his name. There is Blomqvist, unfortunately, another great Audi exponent, Hanno Mikola. Unable to uh, continue in this event, having uh, lost in the first round. This is the second matching of these two, and it's looking good, very good for Carlos Sainz this time. Through the water splash. Just hear that whistle there, that's from the uh, turbo trainer. Very nearly a spin. Just look at the way you can get these cars sideways. Total opposite lock and still recovering it. The sophistication of the four-wheel drive system in these cars are, uh, well, not nearly as sophisticated as the Toyota you saw earlier, the Toyota that indeed Sainz is used to, and the crowd is applauding. They think that Sainz is going to take it. Carlos Sainz, El Matador, comes towards the line, and Carlos Sainz wins it. So it is one all in this first of the two semi-finals. The 30-year-old from Madrid, Carlos Sainz, beats the great Audi Meister, Long fist, one leg each. Who is going to make it in this third and final leg? Stick Longquist, remember, won the race of the champions last year at the Nürburgring. Carlos Sainz actually crashed and destroyed a Toyota in the practice for that event and took no further part. Sainz, of course, urged on by his fellow Spaniards, watched by his fiance Reyes. Signs, a great all-round sportsman, a former Spanish national squash champion at the age of 16, a fencing champion at school, took part in the Spanish ski championships. Big Blomqvist, I have 
to say is a man who just concentrates on his driving and when it's all over, I have to say, he likes a gin and tonic. Longquist, 14 years the senior of Carlos Sainz, one of the world's great natural drivers, Dick Longquist. And uh, I think Longquist might just have the edge. Longquist in the open face crash helmet. If you get a close-up, Sainz wearing the full face helmet. There is Longquist, concentration written all over his face. Longquist there, and the crowd are a little quieter. This is the third and final run, and it is looking as if it may be going Steve Longquist's way. Crossways over the flyover. Take flapping off the back of the car. Sign still, his hopes alive, the car bucking and bonking. And very nearly against the Armco barrier, Stig Blomqvist, and Blomqvist takes it. Stig Blomqvist goes through with a 126. Stig Blomqvist goes into the final. Carla signs a brave effort, but on the basis of the best two runs, it is Stig Blomqvist who goes through. Carla signs a good effort there. Remember, Blomqvist knows these cars so well, and he did, in fact, just tap the Armco barrier, did Blomqvist, in that final dash towards the line. Signs 1.21 seconds behind. The second semi-final coming up now, Dario Cerato versus Tommy Mackinnon. Tommy Mackinnon has never driven anything nearly as powerful as this. Group N cars having somewhere in the region of 250 brake horsepower. This Audi probably, depending on how the turbocharger has been set, around 500 horsepower. Mackinnon just coming to the line now. This is the second of the three scheduled runs. The acceleration into the first corner, absolutely vital. And Cerato really is going for it. Let Cerato, Cerato smoke the bank there. Meanwhile, look at that car flying, but Cerato definitely in trouble. Cerato's car, the one with the blue spot. Mackinnon there with the red spot on. And uh, the two courses, the way they're laid out, leads me to suspect that Cerato has lost six, seven, maybe more seconds in that incident. It didn't look a big incident, but it seemed to be one that really put him off his stride. Well, these Audi Quattros, these fine former supercars prepared in Sweden by the Rallycross team. Just look at that. Going under the bridge, Mackinnon, and nowhere to be seen, Cerato. So, Mackinnon keeping his hopes very much alive in this second of three competitions between these two men for a place in the final, remember, an absolutely vital race here in the final outcome. Just listen to that. That's the pop-off valve from the turbocharger and the turbocharger probably set at about one and a half bar. Meanwhile, Tommy Mackinnon blasting home to take the flag. Dario Cerato, after that incident, still uh, on his way to the line. This event, remember, tribute to the great Finnish rally driver, Henry Toivonen. It's actually mentioned on that bridge. So, well, there's Cerato, he's finished his run. But the, uh, the winner, Tommy Mackinnon, makes it one all. So who will go through to the semi-final? The next one is the one that really is going to count. Uh, a bit of slow-mo there. Um, that's uh, Cerato having a bit of another lurid moment. So quite an exciting run for him. There's the time. And Cerato, you see, 11.66 seconds behind. Very quick run from Tommy Mackinnon. 1 minute, 26.78 seconds. Good run from Mackinnon. Tommy Mackinnon has only been rallying for five years. Dario Cerato, 39 years old, has been rallying the best part of 20. A double European champion, much, much more experienced than uh, Tommy Mackinnon. But many people are marking Tommy Mackinnon out as a great champion of the future. Says he'll continue in Group N uh, rallying next season. So off they go again. Mackinnon versus Cerato. Uh, 
hard bounce here. Oh, a problem there. Again, a problem. Almost came to a stop. Tirato, so it's looking very much as if Tommy McKinnon is going to go through. But Tirato is off and running again. And indeed, they're still quite close. And very nearly into the barrier. Under the uh, finishing gantry for the first time. And next time it's going to count for real. It's going to count for a place in the final. And who's it going to be? Rato there, Magnum, the man in the open face helmet. And Magnum has done a superb job to get this far. Very much a surprise. And look at the front of that car hanging off and bits of carbon fiber go flying. That plow front has been literally demolished by uh, Tommy Mackinnon and uh, it's very close indeed as they now come onto and look at that against the barrier and Tommy Mackinnon it is Tommy Mackinnon that does it and look at the damage to that car well one of the closest finishes we've seen and uh, well Tommy Mackinnon certainly has <laughs> bent a few panels bangs against the Armco barrier but it is Tommy Mackinnon who goes through to the final. Stig Blomqvist, last year's winner. There you see some of the damage. We'll go head to head with Tommy Mackinnon. Somewhere in the region of uh, 20 years between the two of them. But uh, Chirato certainly going very well in this, his first race of champions. Bang against the Barry. Really did hit it very hard indeed out the car back and uh, well, really a bit of a brutal effort there by Tommy Mackinnon. But good enough for victory anyway in the semi-final.